and I'll try to make any excuse not to go to this church, but he provided me with shoes and a suit and uh, said, I'll see you on Sunday. When they were introducing the visitors, he uh, had me stand up and he says, uh, he knew I was in need of um, a job and some money. I stood up that Sunday and um, the Rev introduced me as his friend. I have a friend here in the back of the church and uh, had me stand up. I was embarrassed, of course, not being a church person. And he says, my friend is in need of some help. So I'm like doing like this, thinking he gonna have people, you know, uh, you know, take up an offering for me. And he said, he's in need of some help. And uh, he said, uh, if anybody in here needs some work done, this man right here will do it for little or nothing. But some ladies, they had offered, uh, they had raised their hand and had me come over to their house the following week to wash down the woodwork in their house. And I was kind of mad at the Rev because at that point I had always been entitled and been given stuff. And he instilled for the first time in my life, which is at 2021, 20, some work ethic, earning your way in life. And me and Rev over the next year became like very close. Uh, Rev uh, did some things for me and he was telling, telling me how to change my life. I was going in and out of jail, just making bad decisions. But he took the time and uh, to try to steer me and guide me, and and he seen some things in me that I couldn't, that I didn't see myself. He had a, he had vision. When I made that collect call to the church, uh, the reverend's office and her office were in different parts of the building. So when I called, I, they said collect call from Maurice, and uh, Miss Wimble said collect Maurice. She was not going to accept that call. She said it again. I could hear her saying, collect from a race. And just so happened to be, the reverend was in her office, and uh, he had told her to take that call. I could hear him say, take the call. And she took the call, and Rev got on the phone, and I told the Rev I was in jail, and he says, I'll be down there. My lawyer had said, well, you have to wait, wait three months, and we'll talk to the judge. Maybe he'll be more receptive. The Rev came on the next day, and talked to the judge, and I was out the very next day. I don't know who Rev was, but he got me out when the judge said, you get nothing, no, not another break. And uh, the Rev says, you know, let's, uh, let's start on a new track, let's turn your life around. And uh, a week later, the Rev was, was gone. He, he had died suddenly. And at that point, I felt that I had owed the Rev, um, I owed Rev. And I promised the Reverend that I would do what's right from this point forward. And I've um, tried to, to maintain a respectable name ever since then. But, you know, the Reverend and the Ashburn Youth Center have been instrumental in my life. Uh, they've always been there for me. Uh, just as a child, as a young man, and as an adult. So uh, my thing was to always try to give back because if it wasn't for the youth center, then I don't think there would be no me because my life was spiraling to the point that even my neighbors would say, well, I'll see you dead because you're headed down the track that ends in death. But it wasn't up to them.